about white spaces. Obviously, right now we don't know what white space is. So I will wait until I get to that point. But um, what we will do in this lecture is we will talk about television channels, software defined radios and cognitive radios. Then we talk about what is a white space, what are the FCC rules and what are the wireless standards. First about television channels. Spectrum is basically you know, named as high frequency, very high frequency, ultra high frequency, super high frequency, whatever, right? They just ran out of the names of high frequency. As they moved from here, from you know, below 30 megahertz to 300 megahertz to 3 gigahertz and 30 gigahertz. But basically, um, this is what you could call, VHF is what you could call a meter band. Because things are in single digit meters, 1 to 10 meter. This would be called a decimeter band. UHF would be decimeter band because the wavelength is from 1 decimeter to 10, de uh, deci to 10 decimeter. Yeah, 10 decimeter. This is right. 10 decimeter is 1 meter. And then this is centimeter band. And we saw the millimeter and so on and so forth and other things. Okay. So, all of you know in the television, there is a VHF channel and there is UHF channel, right? The lower numbers, channel 2, 3, 4, 5 are VHF. The higher numbers like 55, 63, those are UHF channels. So here is the actual numbering system. If you start at um, 54, giga, 54 megahertz, that is where the channel 2 starts. 6 megahertz later, channel 3 starts, 6 megahertz. Every channel is 6 megahertz. Again, this is in the United States. In Europe, it is 8 megahertz. In some other places, 7 megahertz per channel. Every place, they just keep it different so that they are unique. But, um, and actually, there is a reason for all this difference is because things start here and we select something and then they go to some other place and they say, oh, hold on, they have this problem, let's just change it. So they find a slightly better system in some sense, but it's different. It's like electric power. We have 60 hertz and 110 volt. And obviously 110 volt requires a lot more current for any power than 220 volt. So the rest of the world has 220 volt, right? And the frequency is not 60, which cannot be divided by anything. 50 is better. So they go. <laughs> so the thing is they find a better system but it is different. So same thing here. 6 megahertz is US channel. And um, then there is a break. And the channel 5 is at 76. And then there is a break. And channel 174. No, sorry. Channel 7 is at 174 and so on and so forth. If you want to see, there are five contiguous blocks. Not that it matters too much. But basically, Channel 37 is not on any TV because it is used for radio radio astronomy. And um, 5, 6, 7, they are numbered sequentially. So those are all there, 13, 14, 15. At least one channel is skipped between two analog stations. Suppose this city has channel 2, then obviously, one minute, I'm going to come. If this city has channel 2, then it will not have channel 3. All right? And the next city will not have channel 2, obviously. All right, and may not even have channel 3. So there are there are some rules as to where you can use what channel. Otherwise, there will be interference. All right, question. Go ahead. Yeah, so there is, I mean, I there must be some allocation which must have been there before uh, this. They came into this band, channel band. I don't know about that. one. Yeah, so there is something here. Obviously, I would have marked here if I know what it was, but there's FM radio here, I know. So when you tune your FM radio, you know that it starts from 88 and goes up to this number. Actually, it doesn't really go to 174. I have seen up to go 110 or something like that, you know, my FM radio. So there must be something more than FM radio here. Um, all right, so you understand that channels are not allocated. All channels are not allocated in all cities. All right, first of all, you cannot allocate alternate channels. 
Second, you cannot alternate, you have to have a different set in the next city. So there is no interference. Now that was analog. Now we change to digital. And digital actually means, basically means that you take the pixels, the colors and things like that and change them to bits. And the advantage of the bits is that you can easily encrypt, multiplex, mix with the data and everything else. Right? And so, and you can have a standard definition, high definition, and you can, and, and the good thing is that with the digital, you don't need all these empty stuff. You can be closer together and it doesn't take six megahertz. Because it depends upon what qualm you are using, you could get lots of bits. And a channel really needs 19 megabits. All right. So you could do six to eight channels in six to eight megahertz. So with this knowledge, United States decided that we will stop analog transmission. And um, the government made a law that on June, actually FCC stopped, I think it was, it was a law as well. So there was a law which said that nobody can, you know, transmit any analog TV after that July 2000, June 2009. So people who had the old TV, they said, what can we do? We have an old TV. They said, okay, government will give you a free converter. So most of us got free converter. I remember getting a free converter. So basically, I, we can use the old TV with the new transmission paid by the government. But that was good because with all that spectrum became available, the government sold that spectrum as shown well in the last line and they got $19.5 billion from just part of it, not the whole thing. So basically, a lot of TV spectrum became available, which is called digital dividend. Digital dividend. Dividend is like interest. You know, when you put something, you get an interest. So you got the dividend because you went to the digital, you got this extra free spectrum. And so when this spectrum became free, of course, every industry ran after it and basically and, and lobbied with the government saying, I should get that, I should get that. Cellular company wanted it, internet company wanted it, the Wi-Fi people wanted it, WiMAX people wanted it. The, secure, the, the safety people wanted it. Everybody wanted that spectrum. So they gave it to everybody. Basically, cellular emergency services, ISM, everybody wants it, right? So government raised $19.5 billion by selling it to cellular and then saved some for other people who didn't want to pay. All right. Now, so, so much story about the bandwidth. Before I come back to that, we'll come back to that, but let's discuss two development that happen in parallel in the technology area. So one development is called software defined radio. And the problem with the analog radio is just like analog television is that they are specific to a frequency and the channel width, data rate, modulation, multiplexing, everything, you know, it's very expressive. You cannot use an OFDM, you know, I mean, OFDM is actually digital, so don't even worry about that. But you cannot use one modulation and another circuit receiver and all that, right? So the thing is, FDMA and TDMA are a good example. For example, FDA system, FDMA system cannot be used in TDMA world, right? So they are very limited. So people said, why don't we digitize everything? And that would be better than, you know, doing it in the hardware. We could do it in the software. So nowadays we need multi-mode radios which can work on multiple bands, multiple channels, multiple carriers, multiple modes, and multiple rates. And all of this is possible with using digital computation. If you had a fast enough computer, you could just compute everything. And we do have fast enough computer. We call them digital signal processor, DSPs and FPGAs. So basically what they do is they take the signal as it comes and they convert from analog to digital. So this is an A to D converter. Right? Once it becomes a D, then everything else is software. Of course, you need some special hardware, but you can write programs to handle whatever you need to handle. So this is called, this could be called a software reconfigurable radio, but this is called software defined radio, SDR. 
basically in this software you could say that i want that rate i want that modulation i want that this and that right so this flexibility upgradability and lower cost and lower power consumption basically this results in everything good and then there is next thing after software defined radio and very recent stuff is software defined antenna so the antenna is right now analog i mean you cannot use am antenna for fm you know or, or things like that you know i mean because they're all for different frequencies but this thing why do we need that so we can just make you know little tiny chips which can combine together to form a bigger antenna a smaller antenna this and that so that is what is happening right now so there is antenna is becoming software defined which are small pixel elements which are reconfigured by the software for the desired band all right so that is the trend in wireless and and basically the idea is that everything is becoming software defined all right i will stop right there and continue from here next time